Don't go. No. What on earth were you dreaming about? I couldn't wake you, and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobbs. Right. I'll go straight away. What is it? It's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden, you're Sir Radzig's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. I'll give over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. Get out of here. <laughs> or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. I'm in a private area? What a surprise. Long loading screens are all. An oath is an oath. Epilogue! Where is the upper castle? Oh, come on! Well, okay. That is one of the biggest twists I've ever seen in a game, though. You end up becoming a gnome's son. The uh, illegitimate son, but, but still a son. My phone is going crazy right now. It's one of those things, like, when I finish a game like this, I'm like, I'm grateful that I played it. And finished it, and so they're all like, "But what now?" So I brought like five games with me in my collection that like maybe I'll do afterward. I really didn't expect to finish it this week. You guys thought that'd be longer? Wow. Okay. But you know. Oh, how? Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? I assume that we didn't catch him. No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Yobbs wants from us. I like his armor. My lords, Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Gaben. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. Came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. <laughs> this gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Margrave Jobst was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. Question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly, but... Times have changed. How they changed, Your Grace. Sir, 
There is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the Imperial Crown, in return his brother would help him become the King of the Romans, and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the Empire to him. Sigismund would govern, while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the Imperial Court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn Imperial crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas' journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobs, Wenceslas and Brokoff behaved rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. Ugh. People like him, though. But what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Berghoff, Heinrich von Rosenberg... The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Berghoff is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly, without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. Partly due to my efforts.
efforts, and now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Berghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. Sir Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war! And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. Why not? I'll go and visit Berghoff at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Berghoff would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments, and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Kutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I've packed my things. Excellent. Our grave jobs and I will draft the letter. Get ready, and we'll you meet. You can't even there. read. I remember that fact. He can't even read. So wait. I expect it would be best to write it in your name as Lord of Lipa. Quite so, Margrave. What exactly am I to write? Well, you need Radzig. So, it looks like you're off on a mission. Yes. I can't wait. I don't want to dampen your spirits, my boy, but watch out. These are evil times, and who knows what can happen along the way. Not to mention that Berghoff is no saint. Don't worry. I know. You've shown you can fend for yourself, but do take care. You'll be traveling as Lord Capon's bodyguard. You'll be there to make sure nothing untoward happens to him. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears wide open. What Berghoff tells you is one thing, but what you see may be quite another. Rest assured, Father. And don't get embroiled in anything else. Just hand over the letter, hear out his reply, and return. Yes. Very well. Berghoff is at Trotsky Castle. I think you'll find it quite an eye-opener. It's one of the finest castles in the land. It's three days' ride from here, so unless you hit a snag along the way, you'll be back soon enough. Any questions? Oh my god. <sighs> I'm getting a bit lost in the Luxembourg lineage. It all seems a bit too tangled. The Luxembourgs have ruled the Empire and Bohemia for almost a hundred years now. Emperor Charles brought this land to prominence. When he was in power, things had never been so good. Wenceslas and Sigismund are his sons, but by different mothers. Jobst and Prokop are their cousins. They were entrusted with governing Moravia. But instead... They've been in a bitter arms feud for years, and now Sigismund's fallen out with Wenceslas. Wenceslas also had another brother, the youngest, John of Gerlitz, who was most probably poisoned. They seem like a hot-blooded lot. It's hard to keep up with their affairs, since they tend to change their alliances from one day to the next. Who is he really, this Jobst? The cousin of King Wenceslas. He's the Margrave of Moravia. I admit I don't know what to make of him myself. Until recently, he was allied with the League of Lords. For a time, he even served Rupert of the Palatinate against the king. And now suddenly, he's reversed his position. I don't know what led him to do it, and one can't help being suspicious. It's best to keep a watchful eye on him. But he really is the leader of the resistance against Sigismund these days. We'll just have to see how it all turns out. 
I'm a bit concerned so many people seem to think so little of King Wenceslas. You knew him, didn't you? What's he really like? Well, there's no straightforward answer to that question. He certainly makes a great hunting and drinking companion, but he can be very fiery and impetuous when things don't go how he'd like them. He never had much of a head for high office. He finds it tiresome. But once a man's grasped the scepter, it's hard to let it go again. You can't just abscond. You've seen for yourself what happens when he disappears for a few months. Better a bad but legitimate king than a bloody war over the throne. What the freak? Alright, so who's Prokop? Who is this Prokop that Yop spoke of? Yop's brother, the king's cousin. He and Yops warred over Moravian supremacy for years. Then they were allies for a while, betrayed Wenceslas, and sided with Rupert of the Palatinate. But after Sigismund abducted Wenceslas, Prokop fomented a revolt against him, and Sigismund had him captured. Politics. <laughs> make of it what you will. I, for one, can't make head or tail of it most of the time. Okay. The League of Lords and that Burgoth were off to see. Who are they exactly? The lords of the powerful houses. Heinrich of Rosenberg, Otto of Burgos, Heinrich of Radetz, and others. They're unhappy with the way their influence declined after Wenceslas surrounded himself with the lesser orders of nobility. They abducted the king years ago and made him bow to their will. They got away with it that time, and now they've joined forces with Sigismund and done it again. But now it seems that Sigismund's behavior is starting to rub them up the wrong way. So they may well be thinking twice. We'll see what Burgoff has to say. Okay, this is getting interesting. I don't know all that much about Sigismund. He's the king's younger brother and king of Hungary in his own right. Seven years ago, he led a crusade against the Turks, who was defeated at Nicopolis. Some say it was due to the recklessness of the French knights, most of whom were mercilessly slaughtered. Sigismund is ambitious and capable. He might well make a better ruler than Wenceslas, but he's arrogant, and to our misfortune, brutal. Not long ago, he himself was held captive by the Hungarian nobility. They dislike him as much as some of the Czech and German noblemen do his brother Wenceslas. Ironically, Wenceslas joined forces with Jops to liberate him. And now what? this is how Sigismund repays his brother. There's no doubt about it. God does move in mysterious ways. The Rupert point. of the Palatinate. That's a name I hadn't heard before today. Rupert is the Prince Elector of the Palatinate. What's a Prince Elector? The Prince Electors are dignitaries of the Holy Roman Empire who have the right to elect the King of the Romans, who would then be crowned Holy Roman Emperor by the Pope. Rupert took the title for himself with the help of three other prince electors, even though Wenceslas had already been appointed. Some of the nobility in the empire recognized Rupert's claim, but when he went to Rome to be crowned emperor, it turned into a fiasco. Now he's doing his utmost to get Wenceslas to acknowledge him, but so far without success. So, now we have two kings of the Romans. Jops sided with Sigismund for a while, but now he switched allegiance. He seems to do that quite a lot. That young man, Sir John of Liechtenstein, why is he here? The Liechtensteins are a powerful Austrian family with estates in Austria and Moravia. Sir John sits on Jops Council. Since the king's being held captive in Vienna, I suppose it makes sense to have a powerful Austrian house as allies. It could be very useful. That's about all. Very well. Take the letter from Sir Hanush. And good luck, son. Ah. Holy cow, this is the longest epilogue I've ever seen. What? Oh, actually, I can't say that. We just did what did, too. I believe we have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now, but soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. 
Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir, I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary, where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, he could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlets. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burkhoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed. What? So I can do side quests if I want, but if I really want to, I can just end the game whenever I want. Well, let's go end the game. I feel like that's what we need to do, because it's just like, why wouldn't we? Oh, you talk to Hans, okay. So, can we set off now, Henry? Of course. I can't wait. So, to horse! The Lord of Burgov is bound to be waiting as eagerly. Huh. This is so weird, like, why does this exist? You know, like, this shouldn't even be a thing. Like, who did he bring? I'm getting used to it. But what about Rodzig? Has he accounted for not owning up to you the whole time? But he explained it. All will be well, I think. Glad to hear it. It's far more acceptable for a nobleman to befriend a noble bastard than a blacksmith's son. Uh. Mind you, don't come to blows with a blacksmith, my young lord. Uh, you did lose. What do you think about Sir Yobst and his plan? Well, I admit all the scheming has me a little lost. I thought Sigurdman was the devil. Wenceslas a martyr, those on his side the heroes, and those against him the villain. I believed we'd rescue the king and all would be well again. But now it looks a lot more complicated. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I didn't expect the noble lords to be as noble as the angels, but I hadn't expected such a sewer. They behave like children. I can't 
can't fathom how after all this backstabbing they're somehow still on speaking terms. I don't know either. That was belief. True that. Did you know that King Wenceslas is such a such a feckless drunkard? Not really. And to be honest, I'm not sure I wanted to know. I slept better believing my fate was watched over by a wise and powerful monarch. So did I. What a dismal world when you can't keep trust in your own king. On the other hand, times were better with him here than with him gone. Isn't that the truth? Right? What do you think of Sigismund? If I were him, I'd have had enough of my brother even sooner. But he's a monster. Look at what those hordes of his are getting up to here. What he did in Scalitz. True enough. On the other hand, if Wenceslas and Prokop hadn't double-crossed him, none of this would have happened. No one forced him to burn Scalitz. That's a fact. But he couldn't let him shit all over him either. Not that I'm defending him. He's a weasel. <laughs> no doubt about that. Do you know anything about Prokop? Ha! <laughs> Sir Hanish could tell you a thing or two about him. Why? Last winter, a certain Sir Jan Sokol of Lamberg, a well-known knight, or robber baron to some, tried to occupy the city of Igla, which was on the orders of none other than Prokop. And what has that got to do with Hanish? Well, he was there with him. Of course that's not something to brag about in front of yachts. And what was it all about? They wanted to occupy a city that was on the side of the League of Lords, but despite there being several hundred strong, they didn't take it. For one thing, they couldn't get past the Eglau women, with their pitchforks and cauldrons of hot water. <laughs> I would never have thought of Sahana as such a rebel. Right? I see, I see they have cape on more than him. And have you heard anything about Rupert of the Palatinate? A little. He can't manage even to wrest power from a king who doesn't much care for ruling and isn't fighting back. That doesn't seem like a man who has what it takes to rule. And that's all I need to know. Hmm. Where are you going to take your rote? It's a big question. I know you do eventually. Matt Burghoff will go to see. Do you know anything about him? I haven't heard much good about him. But I have a feeling that some other nobles are quite in awe of him. And his castle is apparently quite impressive. I'll be interested to see for myself. And what about the League of Lords? Wealthy, pompous. The king doesn't seem to like them much. He's chosen to let the lesser ranks of the nobility into his circle. Men like your father. I admit I don't blame him one bit. But the lords weren't happy about their lost influence, so they put the foot down. If I were Wenceslas, I'd have let them hang after they abducted me the first time. But he gave them seats at the provincial council? Little wonder they're back at their old tricks. Uh-huh. Anything else? Can we fast travel? Where even are we? We're in Noyoff. Ah, I tried. I just assumed we're just going straight north. Anything else? Or is this just kind of useless to tell a story for the next part of the game? When it eventually comes out. I know your quest was okay. It wasn't even that big of a deal. 
pretty straightforward for the most part. Wait, is this him and I? Huh. Do you want to go fast? Like... I can have a monologue at this point. I probably will do the sequel to this game just because of... I did enjoy it for the most part. I probably would do a South Archer because, you know, Skyrim logic. Actually, Archer in this game is hard. That's what I actually do. Another point I do enjoy it. Because it's not just... Oh, here's the crosshair. You're going to hit automatically every time. I got reminds me, I have, I have skill points to do. <laughs> we'll do that. Perfect throw, because that sounds fun. We'll do last grip. All right, we gain some levels. Cool, look what, six points of... That's weird, there's a camp right there. Oh no. What's the catch? Can we go? Are you ready for this? Of course. At last I'll get to see more of the country and have a bit of an outing. Why? Oh, there's everybody. Let's get to it then. I finally have the feeling we're doing something worthwhile. We're helping to save the king. Instead of saving his drunken majesty, I'd rather find that horse who murdered my parents, get the sword back from him, and skewer him with it. Cheer up, Henry. I have a feeling you'll get your chance one day, and it won't be long in coming. Forward, men! Authentis Fortuna you are! That's what? I don't know what. That was a very weird ending. Like, it, it sets up for the sequel. I feel like that chest at the end was just like, hey, this is where you're gonna start out next game, you know? At least that makes sense to me. Um. Is that it? Alright, that is it. Um, I do want to mention, I'm a history nerd, so a lot of the people in this game were actually real people in real life. And you saw the history advisors in the credits. Uh, Hans, Hans K. was actually a real person, I can't tell you his real name, the Czech name. Him and, uh, Hanish. But, eventually, k takes over Rattay eventually, at least according in history. B, the House of Luxembourg, this is the last time the House of Luxembourg is actually relevant in history. Sigmund, when Sigmund eventually dies, I think in uh, 1420, the 1420s, like, he's the last male, so in back then, males carried everything. So once the males are gone, it's over. Um, what else I can think of? And then there's, um... Bohemia become, become Hungary. Um, actually, I'm not gonna say anything else about 
Sigismund. Because I think the game's gonna tell because I feel like the game's gonna follow what history actually does happen. Um, with that said, I'm excited for the sequel. I am breaking this video into two parts. I'm not doing an hour-long, 17-minute epilogue, but it's been fun. And guys, next time on Factor of the Game, I didn't decide my next game yet. I wasn't ready for this. Surprise! I'll see you then.